Welcome to another episode of the Investment Immigration Podcast, brought to you by uglobal.com. I'm your host, Salman Siddiqui, from Berlin. Today, we are going to focus on Brazil and the investment immigration options there. Brazil is usually not talked about as a destination for investors from around the world. So first, would like to know from our guest today, what exactly are those options there? And we're also going to talk a lot about the Digital Nomad program there, which was launched not so long ago. And to help us unpack all of this, today I have a very special guest all the way from Brazil. His name is Alessandro Jacob. He's a senior lawyer at Alves Jacob Law Firm, which is based in Sao Paulo. Welcome to the show, Alessandro. Thanks for having me here. So, Alessandro, please tell us about Brazil's Digital Nomad program. Can you provide an overview of the program, how it caters to remote workers and freelancers, a little bit of history about that? Oh, yes. Brazil Digital Nomad is very, very well known right now, very famous, because many people from Europe, from the United States, Canada, and now around the world are coming to Brazil because they can make money in dollars, euros, or British pounds, and spend in reais. And uh, as everybody knows, the currency is a very advantage here because dollar is almost five reais. So uh, with your money, you, you can do a lot of things in Brazil. It's a cheap country. So uh, in this program right now are on the top notch because many people are coming. Uh, digital Nomad Visa, there are very simple requirements. Uh, if you make $18,000 per year in your home country, in a company, you become eligible to apply Digital Nomad Visa and live in Brazil. So and every year you can renew this visa. Just need to prove that you're still making $18,000 per year. That means $1,500. So as you can see, it's very easy. And uh, there is a lot of requirements like documents, uh, passport copy, health insurance, very simple that uh, you can easily get it. Right. And before we talk more about the eligibility criteria, I want to understand, uh, you just mentioned that this program is very popular. So are you seeing for this particular program people coming from the United States, for example, or are you seeing more from other countries? Could you share some trends if you know? Yes, yes, a lot. Uh, we have been doing uh, working with immigration in Brazil since 2003. Now we are hampered by most embassies and consulates around the world. And uh, now we are seeing uh, this is a new program. Now we have something about uh, three or four years for digital nomad visa, but it's increasing exponentially because many people from the United States that in order to get out of the expenses now and, and high costs in New York or Miami, Los Angeles, these big cities. So they come to, to Rio or Sao Paulo, or even in Northwest, where it's cheaper than Rio and Sao Paulo, have a nice life, spending much less than in their home country. So with their money, they can do much more here. And uh, since the, the program is, is easy to uh, get it, so there is no reason for them not to come to Brazil. Right. And let's now talk about how one can apply for this visa and the kind of process that is involved. So you mentioned earlier that uh, the eligibility is not that high. The amount of money that you need to qualify for this program is not certainly high. But what are the other eligibility criteria that is required? What kind of experience that one has to show in the application, for example, do they have to, you know, be working for a big company or they can be self-employed? How does that work? Oh, self-employed is not accepted. And, and also it's not necessary big companies. Brazilian law just say that you must be hired for a company that pays your salary, yeah, like, as I told you, $18,000 per year. And so whatever company you may work, it's okay for the Brazilian government. And uh, besides this proof of wage, it's necessary a lot of requirements like passport copy and also uh, health insurance in Brazil. And then also the most important, the criminal records. You need to show that you don't have any 
criminal records in your home country, and you must bring this document apostille in order to sworn translated to Portuguese in Brazil and apply to the government. I see. Understood. So say, for example, somebody based in the U.S., you know, they run their own company or they have their own startup. Can they qualify for this visa, you think? Yes. If he is, he is a shareholder of the company, yes, he can do this. No problem. Because he can show that he can make from this company $18,000 minimum. So uh, we just need to prove that this company pays him. I see. Okay. Now, also, let's talk about for how long is this digital nomad visa valid for? Is there an initial visa validity period? Are there options for extending or renewing this visa? So if you could explain something about that. Yes, absolutely. Digital nomad visa is valid for one year in Brazil. And uh, you can easily renew if you show Brazilian authorities that you still make this money, $18,000 per year. So as long as you prove that you still are working for this company, make the same kind of money, they will renew your digital nomad visa for another year. And is that the limit of renewal of the visa? Can one keep on renewing it if one you know, likes a destination yes. and say wants to stay for three, four years? Is that possible? Yes, that's possible. As long as you show $18,000 per year salary, you can renew it. I see. Okay, now let's also now talk about the advantages that this program offers to foreign digital nomads. So if you could explain a little more about the benefits of participating in this program, such as, you know, the tax advantages that one gets, the access to maybe local services that one can get, if you could just explain what are the benefits compared to, say, other countries' programs? Yes, uh... The benefits that I think the most important that you spend less money than your home country. If you come from United Kingdom or United States or Europe, many countries in Europe, of course, not all of them. But here, Brazilian authorities ask for you pay taxes. So if you make money and you have visa, you should pay taxes. And uh, if you come from a country that has an agreement in order to avoid double taxation, so you don't pay taxes in Brazil. We need to see case by case. But for the services, you can reach health, education, whatever we offer in Brazil, you are eligible to get it with your visa, resident visa that you come from your digital moment visa. Right. And that is, I mean, sort of expected in, you know, in any other country's programs, the access to education and health. But talking about the taxes that you just mentioned, of course, you know, it's a case by case basis. But does the country tax your global income that you make when you're on your digital nomad visa? Yes. Here in Brazil, whatever money you make inside the country, you pay taxes. So, as I told you, we need to check which nationality, uh, which amount, and so uh, you are free of taxes or not. It depends, uh, really depends case by case. Okay, okay, I understand that. Now, moving on, let's also talk about, you know, some critics have uh, raised concerns about the practicality and implementation of the digital visa. In terms of the program's effectiveness, I want you to share your insights How effective is this program? You say it's very popular, but I'm talking from the perspective of an applicant, you know, tax advantages, education and all, but aren't there hurdles, for example, the language hurdles for an applicant, digital nomad might face there, uh, rent cost or finding a place. Are there any practical hurdles there in the country? Yes, Brazil is very accessible. You can rent apartment here very easily. You can pay much less than the United States, Europe, and many parts of the world. Then you can easily go to the hospital, even if you don't have a very good health insurance. Okay? Here also, you can have a very good quality of life. For example, if you live in Rio de Janeiro, we have beach in the whole city. So uh, you can rent a place close to the beach, you can jogging, you can have fun, you can have you have good restaurants that you can relax and enjoy. So uh, I think it's a very good of quality of life. I know those of countries and 
I see Brazil, it's a fantastic because we don't have a nature phenomenon here like tsunamis, like uh, earthquake or something like that you see in other countries. And, uh, and also, uh, we don't have terrorism. We don't have this kind of people that go in the market and shouting everyone. You never heard about this in Brazil. So it's a, a party country, you know. It's very good if you come here, make your salary, and, and enjoy everything Brazil has to offer. Right. I mean, is this the perception of the digital nomad visa is that usually single applicants come more on these type of visas on, in different countries? But are you seeing people who have families, for example, and they want to, you know, try out a different destination who come with their, you know, maybe children? Is that even possible to do that on the digital nomad no. visa? Brazilian law says that only the applicant get digital nomad visa. But... We have a way here that we can add dependents as wife and children under 18 or under 25 studying. Because uh, we, after we apply the digital nomad visa, when the foreigner arrives in Brazil and we go to register his Brazilian ID, on the same time, we can apply for their dependents. So they come as tourists and then they become digital nomad visa dependents. Okay, now moving on, let's now also talk about how Brazil compares with other countries in the region in terms of offering digital nomad visas. You know, do you see program needs to do more, perhaps to attract more foreign applicants, perhaps give more tax advantages so that it becomes more competitive? Do you think it's good enough at the moment and there's no such need for improvement? I think uh, with my experience, uh, I, I did many applications for digital nomad visa, and I see all my clients very happy here, thanking me all the time, saying that they spend much less money with rent, with food. They traveling around Brazil, they go to North, go to Amazonia, go to Northeast because they have beautiful beaches there. They go to the south of the country, they see uh, they go to Foz do Iguaçu because there are beautiful waterfalls. It's amazing. And, and as you can see, it's not so much money because every, I think every, almost everybody that's working outside Brazil can make $18,000 per year. And so it's very easy to get it and uh, very comfortable. As soon as I arrive here, you see the difference and, uh, for other countries because here we have everything. It's a very good idea. Right, of course. And okay, now I'm moving on to another topic. So recently there, I read something online. I want, you know, your view on this. I mean, there was some news about visit visa requirements having been changed for countries from Australia, Canada, Japan, and the US. Firstly, is, is that true? Do they require visas to even enter the country? When are these changes taking effect? If you could shed some light on that. Yes, it's true. Since we have a change in the government, the, this new government that only allow people from some countries because we have their, they have agreements. And so in this situation, since these countries as United States, Japan, Australia, New Zealand request uh, tourist visas for Brazilians, so we do the same here right now. Now we are requesting visas tourist visas for them, but it's very easy to get it. Uh, you can do it online. You can just send the documents and uh, request the, the visas, and uh, you can come here. But it's also many people uh, after this new change on January 1st this year, or even February, I'm not sure, we, we have a new visas. For many people are requesting golden visas that now we have in Brazil. So uh, if you invest one million reais, you can get uh, one million reais in a property in South or Southeast or 700,000 reais in North or Northeast. It means $130,000 or something. If you buy a property on this amount, you receive a permanent visa and you can come to Brazil wherever you want. And so many people are doing this. 
Right. And we're going to talk a little bit more on those golden visa options that you just mentioned. But I just want to, you know, clarify for the benefit of our listeners that now there is a visit visa requirement for certain countries, which wasn't there before. And before we move on to the golden visa options uh, that you just mentioned, can you give us a background of why this is happening? And you just mentioned, you know, the new government's policies. Are we seeing more changes in the coming months? No. There is no more changes for this. As I told you, this new government understands that if they do not give visas for Brazilians, we don't give visas for them. It's just reciprocity, reciprocity, you know, and uh, I think it's reasonable, it's fair. If these countries do not give visas for us, we do not give visas for them. But they are very open for investors, for People come here for work as digital nomad. So uh, the same as in the past, this president, uh, he worked, he assisted us uh, with the president, as president uh, for eight years. And uh, Brazil was growing a lot and bringing people from everywhere. It's a very welcome government for foreigners. That's why he keeps everything. Because I see that he doesn't want only tourists. He wants people to invest in Brazil and spend money here and stay here for a while. So it makes sense. Let's now talk about what exactly is uh, on the table for foreign investors and foreign entrepreneurs. So uh, you mentioned just um, a short while ago about the golden visa options there. So if you could explain a little bit more detail about, you know, say, for example, an investor listening to our show in the US or in any other part of the world, and they want to come to the country and gain a permanent residency by buying real estate, how they should go about it? What are the options? Oh, here in Brazil, it's a perfect time to do this because due to the pandemic, the properties are very low, very cheap right now. And the dollar is high. So all of them that come to Brazil and invest in properties take advantage, have a fantastic advantage right now. I don't know in the future if the maybe the dollar will go down and the price of property go up. So I don't know what will happen, but right now, for sure, they have an advantage if they invest in Brazil. The law is very clear and says that if they invest 700,000 in North, Northeast or Central area, they receive the permanent visa. As the same as if they invest 1 million reais in Southeast, as Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, and all these areas, they become eligible to to apply residence visa as well. It's a very good opportunity. Just to clarify, you're saying seven hundred thousand dollars or one million dollars, or I'm saying seven hundred thousand reais oh, okay. for north and northeast. For example, uh, Belém, Manaus, Fortaleza, São Luís, and uh, many of these places. So it's seven hundred thousand reais. That means around a hundred. $50,000, something like this, okay? And if they invest $1 million, I can make the calculation here and let you know right now, for example, $700,000 or $145,000, if they invest this in North or Northwest, they get permanent visa. This is amazing. And uh, it's a very simple procedure. I used to help my clients with due diligence in the property. We can check documents, prepare agreements between buyer and seller. We make the due diligence and after and make the registration in Brazilian Central Bank and now after these procedures, so they are ready to apply the permanent visa, Brazilian Immigration Authority. The same happens for South and Southeast, but the minimum is one million reais. That is around two hundred thousand dollars. But the procedures are the same. We also can help with the due diligence, and we can make this buy through video conference, so if not, we can make the registration. And they also we can help to register the property in their own names after the transaction. Are you saying that if somebody wants to live in the big city like Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro and buy property there, that's not on the table? Yes, absolutely. As okay. I told you, in this part of the country, as South and Southeast, that is Rio de Janeiro, São Paulo, right. Gerais, uh, and Espírito Santo, these places, 
is one million one million reais. That okay. is two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so say for example, one wants to buy a commercial property, like for example, a hotel. Is that possible in Brazil? Yes, is that possible? Because uh, there is another option for visa here. If you apply, if you invest five hundred thousand reais, that means a hundred thousand dollars. For example, if you create a company and you bring this money from your own account, account abroad to the Brazilian bank company business bank account, you become eligible to apply permanent visa. I have clients as well that create company bring 500,000 reais, a hundred thousand dollars, and may we make the registration, Brazilian Central Bank, we create the company, register the company, there is necessary two shareholders minimum, a legal representative to sign in the name of the shareholders, so we can create the company, register in municipal, state, and federal, then we can use this company to receive the investment from the foreigner, and so the foreigner become eligible to apply investor visa. It's very popular here in Brazil because you create a company and the company here will have very good taxation because it starts at 4.5% and goes until 25%. So it's very good. You know, you, you pay less taxes than much countries in Europe, the United States. And so it's a very good way. It's like an offshore company in Brazil, you know. Let's talk a little bit more about the time it takes to get this particular visa and the kind of process that is involved. Does it take a whole year for this process to complete? What is the time frame for the application process? And also, how much time does it take to get the permanent residency? Does one have to be in the country for a certain number of years to get that? So if you could explain a little bit more on that. It's much less than a year. Okay, because you can create a company here in two to three weeks if you have all documents ready, uh, like CPF and everything, you can open very fast. And after you open and you can receive the funds, uh, the foreigner must transfer this fund to his Brazilian business account because he now has a company here. So after make this in two days and we make the registration Brazilian Central Bank, we can have this in additional 30 days, you know, so uh, you can get this company and visa in two to three months. Depends a lot of them on them because if they bring all the documents, a legal representative and everything. So it's very fast. It's not, not a year or something like that. No. And the time it takes to get the permanent residency, how much does that take? Oh, this process, it's around one month, one to two months maximum, because sometimes Brazilian authorities request additional document, additional proof of the money, because you have uh, some money laundry rules in Brazil, so the foreigners must show where this money comes from. But most of the time, there is no problem with that. They can easily finish this process and, and get this, this visa. And uh, when involved dependents as wife and, and children, is the same as the digital nomad visa. They must come with tourist visa. And when the applicant receives his visa, they come together and join the applicant on the registration of the Brazilian ID. Are you saying that for the investor visa I'm talking about now? So once a person gets that, that residency is already a permanent residency or one has to renew it every year, meeting the requirements for that visa or, or proving that? Or is it just immediately you get it? Because that usually doesn't happen in other countries. Yes, Brazilian government says that it's a temporary visa, but it's a four-year visa. For me, it's permanent. It's a lot of time. And uh, when you renew, so become permanent for the government, not for me. Because for me, he, he arrives here and uh, it's the same as permanent because uh, he can easily renew after these four years. So after that, it's permanent. Now we're coming close to the end of our episode, but before I let you go, I want to talk also about which of these programs, especially the ones you just talked about in the investor visa category, you know, the option of buying real estate or setting up their business or being a shareholder of a company, which one is more popular among your clients to gain a permanent residency in Brazil? What are the trends you're seeing? If you could talk more about it. 
I think that nowadays is the real estate investment residence visa. It's uh, more common because at the moment is very good for this. So people know notice that the prices are cheap for the property and the dollar or euro and British pound are high. So who does not want to take advantage of something? People are coming to Brazil and get advantage for this. And uh, it's fair because uh, they invest in and then in a couple of years, prices will be up, dollar will be up. So they have doubled their money with an investment. And also the environment here is very good because foreigners has same rights as Brazilians for property purposes. So it's very good. And also if they want to rent, it's a very good business as well because they rent for foreigners or Brazilians. They can receive money abroad or even in Brazil. So I have a few clients that they buy property, but now they are renting and they are making money. And then when they are not, I mean, so they, may, they come here like once a year and they stay in their property. Also, they can rent for Carnival for July, for uh, Rio de Janeiro, for example, it's uh, fantastic to do in this because there are people in the whole year, people uh, renting. So it's a very good business as well. Are you seeing people coming from particular countries for, are there people coming mostly from the Latin American countries or are you seeing people coming from the US or certain parts of Europe or China maybe to utilize the investor visa? What trends are you seeing among your clients? Most of my clients are from the United States, then Europe, like France, the British are also coming here.